Today, we finally got our hands on Victoria 3. We will be playing as Great Britain, the most powerful country in the world at the time. But can we keep up with the technology boom about to happen, grow our economy, grow our military and keep our spot at the top? Or will our empire slowly collapse as history demanded? This video is also sponsored by Paradox. So if you want to check the game out, click the link in the description to pre-order as it releases on the 25th of October. And of course, a massive thank you to Paradox. So as Britain, we do start as number one on the country's map list. So we are rated as the most powerful country in the world. And Great Britain is really fun to play as, as you really just get to experience every single mechanic this game has. We have the third highest GDP in the world. And hopefully by the end of this, we can become number one. Now the Great Qing, which is basically China, has three times the GDP that we have. A big part of that is their insane population. Yes, they have 365 million pop. We're going to have to basically try and catch up with that. And as you can see, we're just giving all of their population opium. So yeah, I don't think they have the, the healthiest population at least. But to keep up with that, we need to build. And to build fast, you need construction sectors. And currently we have 50 construction, but you do need to be careful while building because of course construction takes goods. So iron, wood, tools, and fabric. So unless you have a lot of them, you will be paying out of pocket. Now as Great Britain, you can kind of do that a bit and not worry too much. We do have 5.7 million in our gold reserves. So we're going to build a few construction sectors and then we're going to invest in our iron, wood, and tools. And investing in that will allow us to build cheaper. So we're going to do that. And what we're really aiming for is if we look into our market, which the British market is massive because we have colonies in Canada, the Cape Colony, of course, the East Indian Company, and of course, in Australia. What we need to do is flood the market a little bit until we can get the price on like coal, wood, iron, steel down about 20%. So to do that, you need to produce more than your population needs. So yeah, we have to build quite a few of them, try and flood the market a little bit. But if you flood the market too much, what they sell won't be worth anything, so buildings will start to lose money. It is kind of like that perfect balancing act. And about 20% seems to work where your factories and that can get it cheap enough, but the ones making it still make money. It. Now we have an election coming up in about 15 days, and once that's done, we get a free government reform. But before we do that, we can unlock a technology. So we have production, military, and society. And I'm going to focus on production. Production's a really great tree. So you can see we've already unlocked railways, intensive agriculture. We start quite advanced as Britain. So you really want to keep ahead. We're going to pick up canneries. This is going to help our food industries, which produce liquor and groceries, produce more. And things like liquor and groceries keep your population happy. So yeah, we want to kind of produce as much as them as possible so our population can get them cheap. So now we have the old famous opium wars. The Qing government has announced its intent to put an end to the opium trade in Great Qing. As Great Britain is a major exporter of opium, this is a matter of great economic concern. So yeah, they're threatening our economy by banning opium. So they will eat their opium and they will like it. So the Tory party won with 63.9% of the votes. And because of that, we get a free government reform. So we click down here. So our legitimacy currently is 72%. So what we're going to want to do is see these guys. These have 31% clout, so they're pretty popular. So it's probably a good idea to bring these onto our side. They're now a part of the government. So we do that and we have more legitimacy. It's gone up to 86%. Sorry to jump in, but if you want to see more Victoria 3, make sure to subscribe as I'd hit my goal really fast and it would mean so, so much to me. Thank you. Now for the Opium Wars, we need to basically, if you go to the diplomatic lens and we go to diplomatic plays, we do take treaty port and a treaty port allows you to trade whatever you want in that country without having to pay tariffs and all of that stuff. So let's take this one right here. So if we do that, Great Qing and Tibet are going to be on their side. Now we basically have like our puppets and dominions on our side. Korea is most likely to side with the enemy. And then we've got some countries down here who may join either side or remain neutral. So we have Portugal, Dynam, East India Company and Egypt. What we're going to want to do is add another war goal. 
and add war reparations. This forces the country after the war ends to give you 10% of their tax income for the next five years. So yes, war reparations can make you a lot of money. It's always worth chucking that in. And we'll also do it for Tibet as well as they have joined. And all they want if they win is war reparations from us, which of course we can't allow because that will cripple our economy. Portugal is really good to have on your side for this because they have this county here. So if we had Portugal on our side, we could get our troops onto land easily without having to rely on a naval invasion. But it doesn't look like we're gonna be able to get them to join, which sucks. Who's this? So East India Company. Yes, we'll offer obligations and get their troops to come and help us. Cause yeah, they've got a total of 463 battalions we have 166 so once this bar ends we go into war with the great ching wait what wait they back down in our diplomatic play yielding their primary war goal to us well that's not great because i was hoping to have this war and milk them for war reparations great britain rules the waves if we go to trade and export and we find opium here we are. The trade route is already open. Look, we already have a trade route for opium between these markets. Right, we've built quite a few of these now. So it's going to be expensive to build because we can build more at the same time, but it's worth it. Especially when you're this big, you can just eat the costs a tad. So we need to build iron, coal, logging camps, and steel. These are like a great foundation to build before you do branch out into everything else. So yeah, logging camps, especially because they're quite limited. Let's get them up. But yeah, as you can see, last time it was about 30k. Now it's going up to 100k because we have more construction sectors. But building all these will lower the cost because yeah, we'll actually produce more of the goods, especially iron, 62,000. Now for things like iron, coal, anything under the resource, only certain states will have the ability to produce these. We're going to want to build quite a lot of them, to be honest with you. In London, we'll set up steel mills and build that to like level 10. But if we do go to our buildings tab, we can see ones we already have built. So if we find steel, we do already have one in Yorkshire that's already level 10. So yeah, I'm happy enough for that. Now we're losing a little bit of money and that may be worrying, but in this game, going into the red really isn't always a bad thing, to be honest with you. A lot of the time, it just means you're actually spending your money. There's no point building up a massive gold reserves because it's just a waste. So currently we have about 550 more people trying to buy iron than sell it. So once all these mines are up, hopefully the price will drop. We want to get it into the minuses, so iron's a bit cheaper for our people to use. And this is something you do need to be careful of, your infrastructure. So the more buildings you use, the more infrastructure you need. And if you run out, basically they have less market access. The quickest way to fix that is just chuck an extra railway down, and it should be okay. And as you can see, look how much iron we've built now. The price has dropped to under 50,000 because we actually have cheaper iron. So as a smaller nation, you're going to want to build a lot more iron, wood, and tools first before you consider expanding your construction set. Sectors. Otherwise, you'll be in insane debt. The Ripper Gruesome Murders. The Evening Post newspaper reports a series of horrific murders in home counties. According to the article, the police are powerless to stop the murder who they dub the London Ripper. We must bring the killer to justice. Uh, I mean, yes, I hope we do. That does need to be sorted out. We have a serial killer. Now, we did unlock canneries. So I'm thinking we get mechanized workshops as well. Let's keep moving down this tree. Now, if if we look at our radicals, they're going up fast. And if we hover over this, we can see we've had almost 200,000 since last year because of discrimination. So I think, because right now we're on national supremacy, foreign cultures are discriminated against unless they both share heritage and language. Now, multiculturalism, no cultures are discriminated against. We should try and pass that law. It's going to be difficult. We have a 26.5% chance of success. But yeah, we'll debate. We'll get some events. And let's just hope we can pass that. So we can kind of keep the radicals down. So the Ottoman Empire is going up against Egypt. And they basically want us to join them. But right now, we're going to say no. We will be doing wars soon, hopefully. But not just yet when we have all these radicals brewing. So we need to be careful. Because our standard of living is dropping. Let's see if we can work out why. We don't have enough clothes. We don't have enough food furniture and they can have a drastic effect because basically yeah our population are not going to be happy so i think right now let's focus on that if we go to our buildings we should already have some built so textile industries what we can do is upgrade them from here so yeah we need to produce more clothes because yeah we're going to be in trouble if we don't so clothes and furniture so let's upgrade some of these a fair amount because yeah we need to try and get a lot more on the market to hopefully improve our population's happiness because yeah 
The radicals are growing. Oh, the coronation of Queen Victoria. So the king has died and now Queen Victoria takes the throne. God save the queen. So yeah, right now we're building more railways and furniture manufacturers and textile mills for clothes. So hopefully our population can buy them and not go so poor buying the things they need. So if you come to this page, we can see these pops pay an average of plus 3.8% compared to their base price of their pop needs. So yeah, they're gonna go more poor because they're overpaying. We want them to go richer. So to fix that, we can hover over this and we can see. So grain is cheap, but clothes are plus 17.2. Furniture is plus 14. Opium is plus 18. Fruit is plus 20. And coal is plus 16. So what we really need to do is bring these goods cheaper. So to do that, we need to produce a lot more. So that is what I'm trying to fix. So hopefully our peasants then can have an improved standard of living, become happier, become more loyal, and everything is good. But yeah, we're losing money quite fast. So what we're going to do is we're going to decrease government wages and military. And we're going to put our tax up just one for a little bit so we can try and build up our reserves. We have dropped to about 2.6 million reserve. We now have multiculturalism. There we are. No cultures are discriminated against. So hopefully our radicals drop. There we are starting to plateau. And hopefully it will build its way down. No, it jumped, please. Guys. So we just unlocked sewing machines. So yeah, we did unlock a technology that's going to allow us to basically produce more clothes. 2,000 more in total. So if we do this, I'm going to get mechanized workshops. We can produce more clothes and furniture per person in workshops. So just changing them has really helped. Now, we're not too far off getting a plus zero, getting it breaking even with the base price. So if we hover over here, we can see with this little box that we have a shortage of tools and we also have a shortage of hardwood. So we need to fix that urgently. So what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade them. So get them going fast because tools are very important. And for hardwood, you go to your logging camps and click hardwood production. So yeah, they'll actually start producing hardwood. So hopefully this will fix it. Because yeah, right now, look, we're minus 2,000. So tools are very expensive. So to fix that quickly before our tooling workshops are properly built, we can actually import them. So we'll get some from the American market. Okay, so finally, we have built almost enough tooling workshops to kind of meet the demands. So everybody's now not panicking and struggling to get tools. We're still expanding our coal mines and logging camps and steel and stuff like that. And then what we can do is focus big on our furniture, clothes, groceries, liquor and stuff like that to really make our population happy and grow. You know, a miserable population doesn't grow. So we don't want to do that because then, yeah, we need our population to keep growing. As you can see, it's steadily growing. So what we can do as well, we want to colonize, of course. So if it's green, we've already declared interests in these areas. And then you can establish a colony. So we can establish colony there, 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 there. Establish colonies everywhere. And then, yeah, your men will basically board the shores and over time, over years and years, slowly work their way through their lands, granting you a colony. So we're going to do that. And you know what I think might be some fun? Make Brazil a puppet. Now, doing this could go very wrong because we could end up with Russia, France, America, Sweden, Netherlands, and all the others joining on their side. But let's see. Okay, America is going to join them. Hopefully, nobody else does. And if nobody else joins them, we can actually make Brazil a puppet. And a puppet pays 20% of all of their revenue to you, which is a lot of money. So we want to get some puppets, definitely. And you may be wondering why I chose... Brazil, because look, we have a colony right here. So we can actually go by land and fight them. Right now, we're just raising our commanders. We've got two, it hopefully should be enough. Now the smaller army, we're gonna mobilize and advance the front right there. So our smaller army is going to go there. Now, a bigger one, we're going to do a naval invasion of their capital. And if both of these are successful, this should be a walk in the park. Okay, so France has joined their side. That may be a problem for us because France are very powerful. Now, France is our rival, so I can kind of understand it, but it's terrible for us. Say so two arms. Now... Our men are there fighting. We have a 45% advantage. Now, we're going to get Sir Edward to a naval invasion of their capital with Hugh's men. So let's do that. It's going to take them 48 days to get there. But if we can siege their capital quick and take some of the land up north, hopefully we can get their war support to drop fast. There we are. He's there. So they can have a little fight with their ships. Of course, Britannia. We have a great navy. So we can get straight through them. Ooh, we can actually unlock electric generation. We can build power plants, electric sawmills, electric capacitators. Yeah, let's do that. I see our army. Yeah, hopefully we'll be their navy and then get onto land. 
There they are. And there's no one stopping them. No one's actually stopping us right there. Because they're all up north fighting this army. France has even put their troops up here as well. So we may lose this fight. But if we can rinse through their capital quick and take a lot of land surrounding it, hopefully we can get their war support to drop quicker than ours. Ooh, the killer known as London Ripper, who long plagued the states of home counties, has finally been arrested. Clapped in irons. So we got the London Ripper, finally. A general has died. Oh my god. Pause. We need to recruit a new general. Why has this happened? Then this might lose us the war. So we get two guys to pick from. Direct, more offense, or reserved. Yeah, we'll go direct. Right, mobilize quick. We need you. Oh my god. We're gonna lose all our land. I think that's cost us the war. Advance front. There, come on, quick. We need to take their capital back. It's gonna take 60 days to get there. Okay, France has taken their troops from up north. So I don't know where they're heading. Are they coming down south? Because they're gone. So we're actually able to take some land back up here. And hopefully this guy hurries up for 12 days. 765, come on. Right, he's there. Can he flip this? No, he could not flip that. Oh my god, we're actually gonna lose. This should have been easy. Goddamn France. We'll try another naval invasion. We need to get their capital because otherwise they're not going to go lower than one. But right, we need this guy to actually hurry up and get to the capital. 30 days. Come on, this needs to be successful or we've 100% lost. Okay, okay. Take the capital. Come on, take the capital. Now expand like crazy. Okay, we are down 40%. Right, we're going to set the other guy as well to come down south instead. Ignore this up here. It's not important. Let's go fully down the south around the capital and see if we can just edge this. It's going to be close. Come on. Oh, are we about to start taking over, please? Yes, come on. Brazil would accept it if we puppeted them, but France won't. Wait, they give up. We actually won. Oh my God, France. I hate France for that. What? We're still at war with France because they want to humiliate us. So yeah, France are still doing their war with us for it, which they're probably going to win because we're already in trouble. Yeah, we're about to go to a minus 100%. I mean, yeah, there's nothing we can really do, I don't think. Yep, there we are. They humiliated us, so that did cost us some prestige, but it's not the end of the world. We still puppeted Brazil. So if we go to our money and then go to diplomatic packs, we can see Brazil are paying us 14.3 thousand. Nice. So yeah, puppets are very powerful, but now our infamy is notorious. It is 51. The more infamous you are, people will like you less. They're more likely to go to war against you. And I think if it's over like 100 or something, some countries may even go to war against you to force you to release your subjects, I think. So you have got to be careful of that. And because we've obviously built a lot of tooling, workshop, furniture, steel, and everything like that, our GDP has increased to almost 100 million. So we're still about 50 million away from the number one spot. So Portugal wants to join our customs union. So of course, we're going to accept that look. And if we go to our market and members, Portugal is now part of the British market. So their goods will be included. And we could form an alliance with Portugal. You know what? I'm actually up for that. They're not huge, but they could be a good partner for us. So let's become an ally with those guys. Or we very much could force Argentina to become a puppet as well. And like nobody would stand in our way other than Chile. Let's just start making everybody our puppets. Why not? And obviously we do share a border through Brazil. So we can just get them to advance the front lines easily without having to do a naval invasion. So we can force them to ban slavery as well. Let's do that. Let's do, let's do some good for the world. Although we are just starting wars and killing people, we'll force them to ban slavery. I think they may even just concede, to be honest. I'm not sure if they're gonna fully go to war, if they're gonna risk that. Argentina backs down. Yeah, that's what I thought. Now, we've got to be careful of our infamy. We're now notorious. We're now 53. So we don't want to go over about 80, I think. Just keep it slightly lower and you'll be okay. It will slowly now, over time, count down. But Argentina are paying us 2,033. So yeah, not as much as Brazil. They don't have as much money, but 2,000 gold we wouldn't otherwise have. So we've just unlocked electrical generation. So now we can build power plants and we can use that electricity to build like electric sawmills to help in our logging camps and everything else. But I'm not going to do that just yet. So for now, I'm still going to focus on like stabilizing our market. And I'm going to pick up as well electrical capacitators. So then we can improve our textile mills. So yeah, hopefully we can produce more clothes because we're starting to need a lot more than we're currently able to produce. And it's causing some problems with radicals, although it is starting to plateau now and hopefully it'll start going down. So an admiral and politician want a duel. We can let them fight and one of them will die. We should stop it or we should ban dueling. You know what? Let's let them fight. Surely the admiral will beat the politician. Yeah, <laughs> the politician died. What a surprise. And one thing I want to mention about this game is just how amazing all the cities look. You can see the trains going along their lines, delivering stuff. Like... 
Compared to any other Paradox game, they've done a fantastic job just making it look living. Like you can see a little farm bit. It's just nice seeing the trains, the beaches, the seagulls. Yeah, the map is absolutely gorgeous, I must say. Wow, all right then. So the Tory party want to use our trains to basically promote and campaign for their party. Now, if we agree, they get a bit more momentum for their party. But our rail network in the West County will be 25% less efficient. So I was going to go, no. But if we say no, they lose momentum, but we get mysteriously mismanaged rail network, which is 50% less effective. So, hmm, I guess we have to agree. That is a... Uh very sly on their part. But there is another election, so hopefully the Tories lose just for that. Oh yeah, it looks like these guys are going to win with 71% of the vote. Let's hope. Yes, the Tories did lose. Thank God for that. Because you know what? They were snaky for that, and I'm just glad they didn't get in. Now, currently, we have no home affairs, so the state makes no special attempt to put a stop to unrest and uprisings. What we could do is do guaranteed liberties. So this will slow down revolutions. Minus 10% radicals from standing of living decreases, but plus 10% from standard of living increases. So we'll try and pass that. It's 26%, but I think that'll be definitely worth it. So yeah, we've got a fair amount of radicals. We've got 3.39 million of them. Now with almost all of our textile mills built, we're still not making close to enough. Now we could just build more. But I'm going to focus on building power plants and then using them power plants. Once we do unlock electric sewing machines, which should be pretty soon, we can massively, massively increase the production of them. So yeah, we're going to focus us now on getting power within our cities. So power plants, each one will produce, I think it's 50 electric. It's not saying yet, but once it's built, it should. We'll build 10 of them there. We're going to upgrade these two to 10. We're going to build quite a few of them. So we're going to start using a lot of electricity now. So we need to start getting them built up. Oh, luckily guaranteed liberties has passed. So yeah, hopefully the radicals now will start to go down and they're going to be less effective. So that is good for us. Okay. We do have our first power plant built. Oh, so it's making a hundred right now, a level two. So I think it is 50 level one, although it's not being very productive because it's only employed 560 out of 11,000 employees that will go up over time. So I'm not too worried about that. They are recruiting, as you can see, they fired 35 laborers for some reason. <laughs> not sure what they were doing. You need people. Stop firing everyone. Guys, turns out, which is fair enough. Yeah. Brazil are rebellious against us. So we're going to start improving relations with those. We're also doing it with uh, Austria as well, because they seem to want to get involved if we uh, try and make anybody else a puppet. But I think we did just unlock electric capacitators. So now we can use electric sewing machines for textile mills. So hopefully, once you've got enough electric for them, we can fix our clothing problem. Ooh, Belgium now wants to join our trading union. Uh, yeah, you know what? That's a good thing. We'll, we'll accept that, although it did take money away from us for some reason, but we'll take it. More people I think is better. Belgium wants to join a defensive pact. We'll take that as well. I can't imagine anybody anytime soon is going to attack us, but you know what? It seems like a good idea. Just in case France get any ideas to attack Belgium as well, we can try and stop that. Bunda have launched a native uprising against us. So yeah, when we set their colonies earlier, they're still going on. As you can see, we've got British Guinea, British Windward Coast. So we've got a few colonies, but now one of them is basically doing an uprising. They're not very powerful, so we'll just get the weakest commander we have and just set them to go advance front and we should win that no problem. So we've now got quite a bit of electricity being produced. So we've been able to go ahead and enable electric sewing machines. Hopefully, look at that. It's made us go from like minus 2000 to positive. But overall, our market is pretty secure, I'd like to say. Uh, most things were like pretty even or positive on, which is good. It's mainly liquor, which is f not too much of an issue. Tools, which we should be able to fix quite easily. And then grain, which again is a pretty easy fix. So overall, our economy now is starting to get pretty secure, which I'm very happy about. And if we go ahead and enable water tube boilers on like our tooling stations, that would decrease employment by 30,000. So now these people can hopefully go ahead and work in our power plants, our paper mills and other things like our steel mills. So hopefully Hopefully these people now will go get a job in our steel mills. There we are. And it's starting to go up now as well. They're hiring and it's working successfully. Electricity is great all over the board to basically allow you to put your laborers to work elsewhere. So that is very useful because then um, they can actually be employed in somewhere a bit more useful. And you can just kind of automate their jobs. I have just queued up a bunch of railways to hopefully be built pretty soon because we now have the ability to do rail transportation. So this, again, will decrease employment. So these people can go ahead and do better jobs, more useful jobs. So this is what I'm going to focus on 
for now. Try and slowly but surely get a lot of laborers out of working in the mines and the farms into working in power plants and stuff like that. Our GDP as well now is absolutely exploding. We're getting loads of railways down so we can transport things better. Then all of these uh, laborers are moving into better jobs, producing more expensive things for us to sell, producing more items, really. So now our GDP luck is shooting up. So I think pretty soon, hopefully, we can become number one. Not gonna lie, at this point, yeah, we're making so much money, we have 34 million in reserves. So we're gonna take this time now to build up our construction sectors so we can just spend more money building things faster. Yeah, it will be quite expensive once they're all built, but we have the money to fall back on. I mean, then we can build things faster to hopefully make the money back before it's too late. Here we are, we've expanded our construction to 250 now. 269 sorry we have so much money to burn for i'm going to upgrade even more and then we can build things once again even faster we, we, we got a lot of money we may even have no we're still number two but very soon we should be number one on the gdp list we're building things insanely fast now our money's not dropping because yeah we're using it from the investment pool the investment pool is basically money built up that will be used for like construction and that let's get a lot more iron on the market because we're going to use it a lot faster now for a lot of building everywhere so that's going to be our next focus and now we can build it quite fast as well because right now we're spending about 240,000 on just iron so hopefully with more iron mines we can kind of bring that down a bit yeah well the investment is starting to pay off as you can see it's dropped to about 200k now we're starting to almost go positive on iron on the market like they're the kind of risks you need to take like upgrading your construction to losing 400k but you know investing in iron would do that quickly to try and bring that cost down before it actually affects you and there we are all our iron mines are going up and our GDP is now number one in the entire world. The British market rules supreme. Let's hope we can keep it going a little bit longer. Now we did just unlock coal fired plants. So now we can use coal to basically get more electricity, but we don't really have a surplus of coal. So that's going to be our next goal now, building up our coal reserves and then upgrading our power plants to produce a lot more electricity. Finally, we have more coal on the market than by orders. So now we can enable coal fired plants. It'll take some time to readjust, but hopefully now we'll start to see more electricity produced because we're quite a bit in the negatives. Okay, by this point, it's 1863. We have a decent economy. There's, of course, a lot more we could do with the technology tree and building up our economy even more. We were over 200 mil, but it's dropped a bit. But I'm not worried about that because I'm now going to focus on building up my military. We've got a pretty weak military, you know, for the size nation that we are. So to fix this, we're going to start building munition plants. We're going to put these right up. We want to build a lot. And also arms industries. We don't really have many of them. So we're going to pump these up a lot. Start getting an excess amount of them on the market. And then we're going to build barracks. And then we're going to start, you know, employing more generals and hopefully build a pretty big army and my plan is to get revenge on France for what they did to us earlier. So we're going to try and conquer France's capital. So France and Italy 100% will be fighting us. We may get completely destroyed but I just want to end this video on a nice big war for you guys. So you know it may go terribly, it probably will, especially if like <laughs> Russia, Prussia, Austria, Netherlands and Spain get involved. We're done. So Russia are most likely going to join them. Well that is... That's actually terrible for us. So all our allies are pretty useless. <laughs> We've got France, Italy, and Russia. Yeah, we're in trouble. If we win this, I'd be absolutely shocked. So we're going to get our admirals. We're going to naval invasion. Now, if we go over there, we're not actually going to be stopped. So let's do naval invasions right there then. So we're going to send those armies in first. Hope they land and push towards France. Right, okay, our units have landed and it's not looking too good, actually. We have been met by Italian troops now, so they have moved troops here. Yeah, this is going to fail. I don't think we're even going to be able to board. No, not like this. Come on, please, at least, at least board, guys. Come on. Okay, well, our naval invasion has definitely failed. That's quite embarrassing. That's not exactly what you want, is it? Let's try up here then. We'll give a go up here trying to invade. We'll see how that goes. If this fails, we probably definitely lost this war. Okay, so they're about to arrive in one day. Please, guys, don't, don't fail. We need this. Yeah, they're heavy on the defense. and I think they actually have better troops than us. Oh, no. Our naval invasions are just getting taken out straight away. GG, France. You beat us twice. 
Well done. We destroyed our economy. Just trying to build an army to defeat France and it backfired. But yeah, of course, if you do want to see more on the channel, let me know. And I got to say once again, a massive, massive thank you to Paradox for sponsoring today's video. But my overall thoughts on the game, honestly, very positive. I do love the new war system. It's nice to just kind of relax, build up your economy, make sure your market's flowing well. Right now, mine's doing not too bad, considering I did do a big focus on military. But I wasn't sure how I was going to actually feel about this game once I got to play it. And I gotta say, I very, very much been addicted to this game the last few days. But of course, thank you all so much for watching, and hopefully, I'll see you in the next one.